Hey guys, DB Right here, and today we are continuing with What If Bardock Was Sent to Earth? And, um, this was a very interesting story from so far. For those of you who haven't seen the previous parts, our story began when, um, Bardock was still just a kid himself. Was, um, one day assisting with his father with fixing up some space pods when one of them malfunctioned and sent him pretty much hurtling off into space and fortunately with um, a couple of more mess ups and a cosmic storm here and there he ended up on planet earth and is essentially taken in by Gohan and by Gohan I mean Grandpa Gohan who is much younger at that point of the story just like in the original timeline how his son was taken in however it took a lot of work for um Bardock to come around and open up to the old man you know Bardock being a Saiyan and yeah that kind of um hilarious nonsense we eventually got to the point where Bardock was an adult man and began having adventures with Bulma and the gang much like his son does in the original timeline and after the whole Pilaf saga played out which was hilariously considering Bardock's power level at the time who even at that time was high enough to be at a power level of 4000 after all well, Bardock is a well, he's a, he was always a born warrior, always pushing himself to get stronger. So, it wouldn't surprise me that at that time he had a high power level as a child. And, um, well, basically, after the Bulma saga, this is where Gine came into the picture. And Bardock did not get along. Or even to this point has not really gotten along with Gine because she's just so weak compared to a Saiyan, kind hearted and whatnot. But whenever Bardock did something reckless, he did begin to soften up on her when she was always there to sort of help patch him up. And as we headed into the World Tournament series, we found Jackie Chun still winning the tournament. I know what you're thinking, if Bardock entered, he should have won easy, flying colours. Yep, Bardock, however, just could not withstand the lightning surprise attack. The same technique Master Roshi had Goku trapped in the original before Goku looked to the full moon, turning into a great ape in the World Tournament series. Yeah, Jackie Chun was able to hit Bardock with the same technique, and Bardock, no matter how powerful he was, he just couldn't break out of the technique. So he had to um, submit, making Jackie Chun the overall winner. And this is where the story continues as we head into the Red Ribbon Army Saga. And um, Gine and Bardock are off searching for Gohan's Dragon Ball. After all, Grandpa Gohan did want it back. And, um... Because, yeah, remember, Grandpa Gohan ain't dead in this timeline. And, um... Yeah, and Gine is tagging along with Bardock as well. However, there is competition in looking for the Dragon Balls, as the Pilaf gang are at it again, as well as, of course, the new... this new threat, the Red Ribbon Army. And... With Bardock and Gine with possessing Bulma's Dragon Raider, at least for the moment, well, they're quickly about to secure the first Dragon Ball, which is when Bardock and Gine have a run in with Colonel Silver, and, um, well, you can imagine that Colonel Silver did not have a good day. I mean, Dealing with Goku in the original was bad enough, but this is Bardock, who is 
basically a titan compared to what Goku was at that stage. And even Gine is um, pretty much a beast herself. Still the weakest Saiyan, mind you, a power level of 500, but still, to everything else on Earth, she she's the second strongest on the planet, next to Bardock. And, um, well, after they recovered the first Dragon Ball and begun heading towards the snowy region of, um, where Muscle Tower is located and General White and of course Snow's Village um yeah as they flew there they're, they're hit by surprise by the sudden change in weather and both of them are freezing and well luckily for them they were pretty much found by Snow the difference is since these were two adults, she couldn't exactly drag them by herself, so she had to go back and get her mother for help. And so they were able to um, drag them inside, and they warm them up with warm blankets at the fireplace and hot cocoa, much like Goku went through. And then, pretty much, with confirmation that there is a Dragon Ball in the area and that the Red Ribbon Army is um around, Bardock is quite looking forward to stretching his arms and legs and fighting some military folk. He hadn't done anything this fun since um his days on Planet Vegeta. And Gine, who's not really much into fighting, she pretty much decides to um stay behind and protect the family, because if the Red Ribbon Army is around, they might come knocking on the door. And it just made, made more sense, because as we know, Gine doesn't really like fighting that much. And so, pretty much with that, Bardock has pretty much charged Muscle Tower on, on his own, and, um, well, let's just say poor Major Metallotron, pretty much beaten in one hit, and then he meant up to deal with the Morozaki 5, who, let's face it, did not stand a chance, but still we did get to see some of Morozaki's comedic antics, and Bardock was um, having fun sort of um, playing around with him for a little bit, until basically he got bored and decided to go serious on Morizaki, resulting in Morizaki releasing Android number 8, and, well, just like in the original, Android 8 turns traitor on the Red Ribbon Army, and, um, decides to assist Bardock, not Goku, with his quest to free the village elder and secure the Dragon Ball. And, well, meanwhile, the guards who were um, following the tr Bardock and Gine's trail did manage to find the Sano's house, but luckily for them, Gine was around who easily took the pair of them out. And well, suddenly, Gine starts sneezing and coughing a little bit. Perhaps this cold weather is hitting her a little harder than what than she thought. After all, it's not like she's Bardock who's who's used to um, all sorts of different terrains during his time on Planet Vegeta. Even at that po point in his young life he had done more more missions than Gine ever did. And um well Pretty much, in the meantime though, Bardock did have a little bit of trouble beating the pink gooey monster of um, hidden in um, General White's basement. However, he was able to um, essentially defeat it the same way Goku did in the original, blasting a hole, letting the cold breeze in, and then destroying him with his signature attack, the same one he throws at Freezer. 
in the uh, original anime where Bardock was around to try save his planet. <laughs> yeah, that attack. And so, pretty much with that, the Elder is um, free and uh, Muscle Tower destroyed and um, Android number 8 hands over the Dragon Ball and they're pretty much able to go on their way to um, find the next one. Because um, Gine held the Dragon Raider, it didn't get all smashed up and damaged, so there was no need to go to um, West City to get Bulma to fix the Dragon Raider this time around. And, um... Well... As they head to, um... Towards the islands that are under the protection, I guess, of General Blue. Well, they realized it's deep in the ocean, and Bardock did try to do a Goku and swim down to the bottom, but not even he could make it. And so, yep, it was now time for a trip to West City to see if they could borrow a submarine of sorts that, um... So they could get to the bottom, which Bulma is um, more than happy to oblige, as long as they take her w with them to the um, to the site, because she's just like in the original, annoyed with Yamcha at the moment, and how popular he is with the ladies. And um, well, if you think um, Gine and Bardock are holding Bulma's hands and flying her around. Think again. Well, mind you, she does have the shrinking watch, so she can be easily carried, I suppose. Yeah, we'll go with that. Keep it a little bit to the original. And, um, well, just like in the original, Bulma takes the wrong dino caps, and so they're forced to, after Bardock and Gine, have to rescue her from the Red Ribbon Army. They're having to go to Master Roshi to borrow his submarine. That is also that I believe is also a plane. And they're going down to retrieve the Dragon Ball, which pretty much plays out a lot like it does in the original story. Except you know it's Bardock and Gine, and they are a lot stronger and General Blue is essentially killed there on the spot. He just wouldn't give up and tried opposing the two Saiyans. Bardock got um, tired of playing around with him and pretty much destroyed him. Yep. Bardock, the badass Saiyan, with very little restraint, especially to those who annoy him. And try to kill his friends. And after all, you, you, you don't leave a fret like that lying around alive for someone who tries to kill your friends like Bulma and Krillin and um, Gine. And um, so with that, they pretty much arrive back on the island on time to see the rest of General Blue's men tr trying to um, attack Master Roshi. Because just like in the original, Bardock left their things there. But Roshi pretty much had it handled, and they were able to give him back a jewel to um, replace the submarine, and then pretty Bulma decides she wants nothing more to do with this adventure involving the Red Ribbon Army, Krillin's ducking out as well, while Bardock and Gine now head towards, uh, what's the name of the area? The Land of Corin. I should not. I should should have known that. Honestly, land of Corin, where they best um, General Yellow, and now Mercenary Tao has been called into action. And um, well, not long after meeting Upa and his father, Gine suddenly comes down with something, getting very sick, and this is thanks to the um, frozen climate back in Sano's village. It's, it, the symptoms that she had before have now gotten worse 
that now she's pretty much weakened, bedridden, and um, useless. And Bardock is pretty mad and angry about this. And, um... Yeah, essentially... Bardock is thinking, oh, you're useless. I knew I shouldn't have brought you. And, um, well, this is where Mercenary Tal shows up, but he has very different orders than he has in the original story. E even though Commander Red and, um, his right hand, General Black, want Bardock and Guinea dead for all their interference, Dr. Giroux has piped up and says that he wants one of the specimens alive. Now, Guinea is um, out of sight, out of mind, somewhere s safe and completely out of the way. So Bardock is fighting Mercenary Tower alone. Now, you might be thinking this would be a pretty easy fight for Bardock, but remember, Mercenary Tower is a martial arts master in his own right. Not quite as experienced as Roshi, but he's still pretty clever and definitely has enough dirty tricks that he's actually manages to capture Bardock. When it came clear that Tao couldn't win by besting him in combat, he had to um, throw a sleeping grenade and essentially knock out Bardock that way. So, retrieving all of their Dragon Balls this time and heading off, pretty much um, just like the original, Bor is dead, Uber's father. And well, after that, Gine pretty much gets over her um, illness, and now she has to rescue Bardock, because she has the Dragon Raider. Uh oh! Hmm. Most of the did think. Wasn't there supposed to be two of these, two of these things? But since he never found Gine, it didn't really occur to him. And um, well, Gine is pretty much flying off in um, hot pursuit. Now, Tao has in the meantime handed the Dragon Balls, collected his fee, and um, has pretty much left. After all, he's a mercenary for hire. hire. He's not going to stick around. And as far as the bad guys are concerned, they've won. After all, it, they only ha really had confirmed sightings of Bardock. Not, re not really Guine. So, bad guys all think they've won, but there is a Sa Sa Saiyan woman coming to save another of her kind, and also a Saiyan man that she's happening, just so happening to start to admire, and um, she's quite looking forward to being the one rescuing him for a change, and um, well, if you thought Goku massacring the Red Ribbon Army was something, Gine, a power level of 500, no contest. Meanwhile, Giro was trying to collect cells and specimen samples and doing all sorts of testing on Bardock. However, once word um, comes that um, Gine is around and rampaging around the base, Dr. Giro, as well as his son, aka the man who would basically be the model base for Android 16, try to basically run for cover, but most of the place they end up running to pretty much gets caved in on them. Well, don't worry, Giro survives for sure, but his son wasn't quite that lucky. And, um, well, with Gine making easy work of um, the Red Ribbon Army, and then taking down General Black after he um, goes all mutiny on Commander Red, just like in the original. She takes him 
down no problem and is finally able to find Bardock and Bardock thanks Gine for the rescue but also something else has happened as well for the, fir for the first time since they've met Bardock is showing admiration for, for her that she was actu actually does have some fight in her and that she was able to to do this but Bardock is beginning to see what the original Bardock from the original story I suppose saw in Gine in the first place and well they're able to um find the last Dragon Ball before um, Pilaf even had a chance to um, hide it in a radar jamming container. So, at least we don't have to deal with the annoying Fortune Teller Barber saga. So, if there's, if there's one saga I don't like in Dragon Ball, it's that Fortune Teller Barber one. And, um, well, essentially, they um, summon the dragon and they decide to do the right thing and they um, use the dragon to wish to undo all the damage the Red Ribbon Army has done which will only work for all the damage they have done in the past year mind you but it was enough to bring bring back quite a few souls who had died including Bora's father and well with um Bardock and Gine making sure, just like um, Goku, to catch the four star ball before it separates. That is now all good, safe, and secure. And at this point, they pretty much return the Dragon Ball to Grandpa Gohan. And um, they pretty much keep going on and doing their next doing their thing for the next three years on our way to the next Tenkaichi Budokai and I think this is where we're gonna leave things for now so what do you guys think did you enjoy this part of the story how are things gonna go in the 22nd Tenkaichi Budokai after all mercenary Tao wasn't supposedly killed in this reality so does this mean we'll have a less Bloodfirst Etienne Shinhan and Master Crane on our hands? And who will actually win the next Tenkachi Budokai? All this and more next time as we continue this story.